Give me two minutes. I want to pray. And, and Father, I thank you for this morning. Thank you for the free flow of the Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, that you just continue to anoint this word, that you minister to your people, touch them. Lord, lift them up this morning, I pray. Lift them up, Lord. May they hear what you're saying this morning. I pray for every uh, distraction be removed in Jesus' name. I thank you for the frequency of heaven that is flowing into this room, into this auditorium, that you just release people into your presence to hear what you're saying from heaven. Thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. <clears throat> it's a delight to be here this morning. Um, thank you, Pastor Ralph, for having me come and uh, share God's word. It's an honor to uh, share God's word. I love preaching the gospel. I love preaching, but I also love coming to Chestnut Assembly of God. Amen? I don't say that everywhere I go, but there are some people, some places I really struggle because the people are not ready, but you people are ready. Amen? I feel the flow of the Holy Spirit. 19 years ago when I came, you know, there, I, I just sensed a revival here. You know, I just feel the same way. You know, I feel the same way. That same revival spirit is here. Amen. And you're the catalyst to bring in the revival. Amen. You're the catalyst that's going to bring in the revival. Hallelujah. Thank you. This morning, if you, if you will, if you can open your Bibles to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 35. Isaiah chapter 35, and I'll be reading from verse 8 to 10. The title of my message is uh, titled as A Season of Overflow. I believe that we are in a season of overflow. The, the Spirit of God is overflowing, and He's going to touch you this morning. He's going to um, you know, bless you this morning. He's going to um, stir you up this morning. Amen. He's going to inspire you this morning. He's going to speak to you this morning. Whatever the problem that you're facing this morning, God is going to help you. Tell the person next to you, help is on the way. <laughs> Amen. Help is on the way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In order to see the overflow in our lives in this season, I saw uh, um, my message uh, didn't come from just me thinking good thoughts, but it came from a time of prayer. Every, every night, my wife and I, we pray together with my little son, and that's the time that I get my messages. You know. And uh, about a month ago, I was, we were praying, and, and God showed me this, this road. And in this road, it was a, a clear road, and on the side of the road, there were rocks. The rocks were painted with white, but the road was clear. So I asked the Lord, what does this mean? And the Lord said, this is called the road of holiness. A highway of holiness. And the Lord was saying that even as you walk on this road, there's nothing that is going to attack you. There are things that the enemy is throwing at you. There are things that he wants to stop you. That there are things that, that, he, that he is trying to cause disappointment and discouragement to come to you. But those things are going to stop at this hour. They're not going to come through. Amen? I'm not saying that there's not going to be any difficulty. I'm not saying there's no problems. There will be problems. There will be difficulties. But I believe the grace and the strength of God is going to be abundant. Amen? The strength of God is going to be abundant. So you're going to push through whatever the enemy is throwing at you. Amen? Hallelujah. You're going to bulldoze the works of darkness. Hallelujah. Amen. 
men, you have a bulldozing anointing. And women, you're the headlights. Amen. Hallelujah. Here the Bible says in um, Isaiah chapter 35, verse 8, And a highway will be there, and it will be called the way of holiness. It will be for those who walk on that way. The unclean will not journey on it. Wicked fools will not go about on it. No lion will be there, nor any ravenous beast. They will not be found there. But only the redeemed will walk there, and those the Lord has rescued will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. Amen? Gladness and joy will overtake you, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. Amen? Hallelujah. To enter into this road, to access this road, it's called the road of holiness. If we are going to experience the overflow of God, the overflowing power and the presence of God in our lives in this hour, I believe that God wants us to access that road. And God was showing me some keys. And these are the keys that you can access this road. And I believe that as you access this road, that there's going to be great breakthrough. Hallelujah. You're going to see breakthrough after breakthrough in your life, in your personal life, in your family life. You're going to see breakthrough. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 34, verse 8, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. First, you've got to taste. And then see, yesterday I was driving up here and I felt a little bit hungry, so I pulled over. It's a restaurant in Mount Laurel, New Jersey. It's a Chinese restaurant. So I thought, Peking duck, you know, seems good. Let's go check it out. And there was, it was a small restaurant, but there was, it was full. There was people in there. And every time, if there are people in there, I believe it's good. So the only way you know that the food is good, you got to eat it. Amen? you got to eat the food. And it's the same way with God. you got to chew on the word of God. Amen? you got to be in cooperation with the Holy Spirit. The more we draw from him, the more we are connected with him, yes, our days will be good. Hallelujah. Gladness and joy will begin to overtake us. Hallelujah as we cooperate with the Holy Spirit, as we walk on that highway of holiness. Hallelujah. God is calling us to that place, a place of con consecration, a place of commitment. Hallelujah. And there's a grace that's been released in this hour. This morning, I'm releasing that grace upon your life. That which you couldn't do, you will be able to do. Amen. Your prayer life is going to change. Your life, you know, reading the word is going to change. Your life worshiping God is going to change. He's going to take you from one dimension to another dimension. Hallelujah. And the way we are going to access it is, number one, is by receiving the fullness of his love. The fullness of God's love. The Bible says in John 3.16 that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall be saved. Amen? That's how much, you know, God loved us. Uh, in Romans 5.8 it says, when we were yet sinners, God, you know, loved us and he saved us. John 3.16, those 25 words are some of the most, you know, important words in the Bible. The greatest tragedy, tra tragedies in the world and the greatest triumphs in the world are in those words. Beloved, this morning, I've come all the way from Sri Lanka 
to share something very important and it's going to change your life. If you receive this, it's going to change your life. God is asking us to walk in the fullness of his love. And he's releasing his love towards you. Sometimes it's very difficult because we have, you know, identity issues. When we have identity issues to receive God's love is very difficult. In Romans it says that we are adopted as sons and daughters of the Most High God. Amen. You and I are adopted as sons and daughters of the Most High God. And this morning, God is releasing his love. And beloved, as you receive, sometimes you like to give. You know, you're a giver. You want to give and give and give. But this morning, God is calling you to receive. To receive from him. To receive his gift of love. Maybe you've been saved. And you've been born again and you know him. But you've got to know him in a brand new way. In knowing that he loves you. And he cares for you. Sometimes we, we have that, you know, we've already worked it out as a theory. Oh, God loves me and all that. And it's just in a, in a, in a theoretical form. But this morning, God wants you to taste and see that he is good. Amen. His goodness comes as you begin to experience his love. And when you begin to understand the love that he has for you, it's going to change you. Because people will come and people will go. Amen. But God never leaves you. The Bible says that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. That he loved us, hallelujah. That nothing will separate me. No height, no depth, no angel, no, no, no um, principality, no power. Nothing is going to separate me from the love of Christ. That's how much God loves you. Amen. And we need to be wrapped up in his love. For the end time harvest, we need the love of God. Hallelujah. It's not anything else that's going to change this world. It's the power and the presence of God's love that's going to change this world. Amen. We're not just preaching a loving message, but a message full, that's full of the love of God and that's full of the power of God that has conviction power to change people's lives. Amen. Receiving God's love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Receiving his agape love this morning. And the second thing, to walk in this dimension, in the overflow that God is calling us in this hour. The second thing is not only receiving his love, but we also need to give away that love. Amen. So if we don't have it, we can't give it. I learned something. I was praying for little kids. And God showed me this very quickly. He said, he gave me this uh, revelation of how to release something to people. He said, Pradeep, whatever you have, you can give somebody. You know, you can be very confident. See, if you have, you know, um, nice clothes and you have beautiful clothes and you're confident that you can give those away because you've got nice clothes. Or you got like $10,000 spare cash and you feel like you want to give it to somebody. You're really confident that you can help somebody. Amen? If you have nice clothes, you're going to give that, transfer that to that person. Amen? It's in the transfer. Whatever we have, we can give. But if I don't have, I can't give. Amen? So we need to receive the, the love of the Father in this hour. And when we receive that love, we are able to give it to somebody. And that comes by forgiving our enemies. Beloved, you're here and you're hurting. You come Sunday after Sunday, you say, no, pastor, I, I, I'm fine. I pray, I read my Bible, I fast. Yeah, I'm punctual. 
I'm on time for service. But no, deep within you, there's a hurt. Deep within you, there are wounds that's not been healed, that's not been dealt with. How do you know? Because I, 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 I work in the church world and I see people, a lot of the times people change very fast. Amen? They ch change very fast. I remember there was a pastor who worked with me and uh, he told me, Pastor, you're the best guy. You know, I'm going to give my best. Six months down the line, you know, he betrayed me and he left me. What do you do? Amen? But we need to walk in forgiveness. Many years ago, my dad uh, was a very successful T estate manager. He will go into an estate and he will take an estate that's um, making millions and millions of losses. And his gift would be to take that estate and turn it around into an estate that's going to make millions and millions in profits. So God really blessed him in his work. But not only that, he honored God by always preaching the gospel on those tea estates. He had about, you know, maybe over a thousand people who would work for him. But he would take the time, apart from his work, to share the gospel with every one of them. So God, the blessing of God was there at his workplace, and God used him as a marketplace apostle to share the gospel. So every place he went, he used his home, he used all the, the, the benefits he had to proclaim the gospel. So, um, you know, he would uh, use that as a platform. So one of the estates where he got transferred, it was really dark. Sometimes God takes the very most difficult, the most unlikely places and situations to spark a revival. And my dad was transferred to this estate. The, the former T estate manager was murdered alive in that place. There were dead bodies when he was entering into that estate. There were dead bodies. Everybody questioned his uh, willingness to go there. But my dad said, no, God has spoken to me to go there. Every pastor said, you know, are you sure that God spoke to you to go there? He did go there. And it was difficult. A couple of days after he took over office, two terrorists came and put two guns. There was a war in our country. And two terrorists came and put two guns on his head and they said, you know, if you don't give us money, we are going to kill you. We are going to shoot you. But my dad is a man of God and he had been in prayer. And the Lord impressed on his heart, don't give them anything, but ask them, what do you need from me? And they said, take us to the city. So if my dad took them to the city, on the way to the city, there were army checkpoints. The army personnel would catch him and put him in prison. But he prayed and he, he, he drove these guys. What he did was he shared the love of God with these two terrorists. And before he went into the city, both of them got born again. And one of them, he actually pastors a, a church. And I believe it's an Assemblies of God church that he pastors. And the other guy is a strong believer. See, what you have, you can give. Amen? Hallelujah. And soon after that, we got a young man. We, we installed him to be the pastor of that church. We planted a church. We planted two churches there. But in the, in the process of time, you know, this young man was going really well. And something happened between him and us. It was nothing wrong, but he was doing some unethical things. Very unethical things. No accountability, unethical things. So I questioned him and uh, with all of that, he um, decided to move on. But he moved on with both the churches. So that was very painful to me. When somebody says, you know, that which doesn't belong to him, he says, it belongs to me. That's stealing. But he went away with that, and 
it caused a lot of pain and grief in me. And not only that, unforgiveness. And unforgiveness usually can cause a lot of bitterness. And I was living with this bitterness and unforgiveness and it was not good. It was not doing any good to me. And you sh many times unforgiveness leads you into depression. Depression is a sense of hopelessness, a sense of rejection, and I was in that. And, uh, and God, you know, um, in his timing, he healed me and I came out of it very fast. But still, that, that unforgiveness was there. And one day I, I dealt with that unforgiveness as well. But unforgiveness is not dealt un unless you're willing at times to meet that person and confess it. So, to make a long story short, I, I was at a pastor's meeting and, and this pastor was washing the feet of another fellow pastor. And I was wondering, what is he trying to do? We haven't come for this. We've come to get ourselves encouraged. Amen. That's why you get, go for a pastor's meeting, to get encouraged. But uh, God impressed on my heart. I saw this young man who had um, hurt us and caused much pain to us. And the Lord impressed on my heart to wash his feet. So I went up to him and he said, I'm, he said, I'm not coming. He said, I'm not coming to what, what you're trying to do. I'm not going to do that. I said, no, I'm going to wash your feet. And I forced him to come and he did come. And he said, I'm the one who's going to wash your feet first. I said, no, I'm going to do it first. So it was very humbling for me to do that and cause me to be his servant. And not only that, after, we washed, after I washed his feet, I hugged him. It was a holy hug and I hugged him for about five minutes and I released everything that I had against him. And the moment I did that, there was a freedom that was released. Suddenly I felt that the burden was gone, amen? And from that day forth, I saw the anointing increase and intensify, hallelujah. Things, things in my life, personal life, it began to increase and intensify. I began to understand about forgiveness. That which you have, you can give. Amen. People come to hurt you. I'm speaking to some of you. You go home, home today, there are people waiting to hurt you. During the week, there are people waiting to hurt you. Well-meaning people will begin to hurt you. Sometimes people are there because the ride is so good. And they're with you. They're clapping with you. But the moment you begin to take a different direction, it's called the direction of revival, they begin to leave you. It hurts. It's painful. What do you do? Amen. What do you do when somebody is talking bad things about you in front of you? What do you do? Man, that rage and that anger begins to rise up within you. What do you do when people lie about you? Man, it's real quiet in here today. But I believe that the Lord wants us to forgive them. That's where the end time harvest is. Amen. That's where the church is going to be powerful. That we're going to walk in the dimension of his power as we are loving people. Amen. Loving those who hurt us. Because the moment you begin to forgive somebody and release that person out of your heart, what happens is the presence of the Holy Spirit will continue to increase and intensify in your life. You'll have a greater heart for Jesus, a greater heart for the lost, and you will only think about other people and not, not about yourself. Amen? Hallelujah. 
forgiving. Hallelujah. 12 or 5, how much time do I have, Pastor? Amen. Forgiveness. You got to let go. In Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, it says, What you meant for evil, God turned it around for good. Joseph went through the same thing. His brothers hurt him. See, hurt and pain comes because the enemy wants to kill, steal, and destroy you. When I left the United States and I went to Sri Lanka to the mission field, I thought, you know, overnight I'm going to have revival because I was so excited about God. Boy, <laughs> I was in for a big surprise. It was not revival, but it was a big mess up. But in the, in the messes of our life, God gives us a message. Through the tests of our lives, we have a testimony. Amen. I'm here today to tell you about the greatness of our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What cometh may, I know our God reigns. Hallelujah. Victory belongs to us. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Victory belongs to us. Hallelujah. He is the Lord. He is greatly to be praised. Amen. What, what is meant for evil, God will turn it around for good. Amen. In Genesis 45 verse 27, Jacob, the father of Joseph, sent his brothers with two carts. I think th those were like rickety old carts. They were squeaking as the carts went away from Jacob's house. But when the carts came back, those carts were full of promise and provision. They were not rickety old carts anymore. They were full of provision. And not only that, the brothers brought good news. And when the father, when Jacob heard the good news of the brothers about, their son, about Jacob's son, Joseph, what happened? The Bible says it revived Jacob. Hallelujah. When we begin to forgive people, it will bring a revival. Hallelujah. The promises of God will be activated. The provision of God will be activated over your life. Hallelujah. Gladness and joy will, be, will overtake your life. Amen. We live in the dimension of the freedom of God. God frees us. Hallelujah. No more getting angry. Amen. There are times where people cause a lot of anger. It frustrates when somebody cheats. So when somebody does the wrong thing. But as you walk in love, God will give you the grace. God will give you the understanding. And God will also give you the patience. That's one of the most important apostolic you know, attributes is patience. Amen. Hallelujah. Forgiveness. And with forgiving, you need to forget. The Bible says, forgetting those things that are behind. I press towards the high mark and the high calling. Amen. The high mark, beloved, and the high calling is a life of holiness. Is a life of sacrifice. Is a life being ready. Ready for his service. I believe that God wants you and I to be, be willing vessels to sacrifice our life. 2 Corinthians 2.15, the, the apostle Paul says, um, I'm like a fragrant offering to Christ. A fragrance, an offering to Christ. My life is a fragrance, an offering to Christ. Hallelujah. The fragrance of Jesus should emanate out of us. And that happens when we sacrifice. How do I sacrifice when I love my enemy? When I love the person who hates me? When I love the person who speaks behind my back? 
if I begin to do the same thing about that person, the enemy is laughing at us. But the moment we begin to love them, the moment we begin to forgive them, it paralyzes the power of the enemy. Amen? And that's where true power begins to be released into the church, into our lives, into our family lives, when we become a community of loving people. You know, loving God, receiving his love, and loving people. Hallelujah. The power and the presence of God is going to be abundant. Number three, to access this road called the road of holiness, to walk in the overflow of his presence and power. Number three, it takes a faithful person. The Bible says in, in Proverbs chapter 28, verse 20, a faithful person abounds with blessing. I have a worker in my team, and she's one of the most unlikely people who can do great things. At times I question because she speaks so softly, and I wonder whether she could do anything. But I'm here to tell you, friends, that God takes the most unlikely person to spark a revival. This lady, her name is Sister Sila. She's a very quiet, um, extremely thin person. If a wind blows, it seems like she'll be blown away with the wind. <laughs> and that's true. I will tell that in front of her. She laughs at it too. And when she speaks, I can't hear because I don't know what she's saying. It's like she's whispering. But she's one of the most dynamic women that we have in our team. You know, she's a very powerful person. And to tell the person next to you, you're powerful too. You know why? Because you're faithful. Amen? The Bible says the faithful person abounds with blessing. It doesn't matter how charismatic you are. It doesn't matter how gifted, you know, we can be. But we got to be faithful. Amen? If you're faithful, you will abound with blessing. One of the things that God has blessed me with, with whatever I do, I try to stay faithful. I don't try to, you know, have shortcuts and do gimmicks, but I try to stay faithful to what God has called me. Whether it's rain or shine, hard times or good times, I stay faithful. Amen? And if you're faithful, you will abound with blessing. You may be the un most unlikely person. I went to a, a meeting. It was a huge meeting. And the guy who was leading that, he's got the biggest church in my nation. I went and preached in his church when his church was only 20 people. And I myself, I had to like, you know, dig deep to prophesy because it was a small house in a corner in, in, our, in another city, in the big city. But today his church has over 5,000 people. So he saw me at the meeting and he said, Pradeep, hey, how are you doing? He said, I want you to come and speak in my church. I said, I said okay. And he said three times and he gave me his number. So he, he's, he's getting me to speak in his church. But what I'm talking to you about is faithfulness. You just stay faithful. Amen. God can open doors. Wherever we go. And this lady, Sila, she's a mo the most unlikely person. But she had... A friend come and stay in her house and, her, and the friend's family. She shared the light of God. She shared the gospel with this friend. Her name is Laomi. And Laomi, coming from a Buddhist background, it's very hard to get people saved. She got born again. And Laomi's little daughter got born again. And Laomi's husband got born again. And then Laomi invited her mother to come. And the mother vehemently opposed the gospel. She came to church and, and demons started to manifest. So it took a couple of weeks to see Laomi's mother's salvation. But she came to know the Lord as well. And she was delivered out of demons as well. And then the mother went and told the sister. And the sister came to church and she had many demons as well. 
and she didn't get instantly delivered. It took a couple of weeks, uh, I believe well over a month for her to get delivered, but she got delivered and she became born again. Her husband became born again. Amen. We were invited to that village to go and we had a revival in that village. Hallelujah. Now they're willing to give us some land to build a church. Hallelujah. That's the power of God. Amen. That's the power of God, friends. It takes a faithful person, the most unlikely person, hallelujah, who's faithful can change their world. Amen. You can change the world. You can change your community. You are important to God. The gifts are there. God's given you a voice. Now is the time to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. Amen. God's given you a, a gift of teaching. A gift of, uh, uh, of an artist. You can preach the gospel. Amen. Faithful people, you know, abound with blessing. Hallelujah. Number four. Is not only being faithful, but we need the move of the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, we can't do anything. Hallelujah. In Luke chapter one, 4, verse 1, Jesus went into the wilderness. He went filled with the Holy Spirit. And in the wilderness, he was tempted by the devil. And he overcame every temptation that the devil threw at him. And in Luke chapter 4, verse 14, the Bible says that Jesus came with the power of the Spirit of God. Every time we overcome temptation, we come in the, in the power of the Holy Spirit. I believe, church, that God is bringing us into that dimension of walking in his supernatural power. Supernatural power comes when we overcome temptation. Say no to sin. Walk away from sin and seduction and fornication. Amen. Say no to that. You make a decision in your heart. Don't be in indecision. But make a solid decision that I'm saying no to sin. And I'm saying yes to God. Hallelujah. I'm nailing sin, the lust of the flesh on the cross, the way God's name becomes powerful is because he, he nailed, he was nailed to the cross. The moment you nail your sin nature to the cross, the name of God has power and authority in your life. That's when you see miracles happen. The power of God will be there because he's, he took the dominion and power out of the Satan's clutches and he brought it back to us. Hallelujah. We got the power because Jesus conquered sin and death. We don't have to live in sin. God has called us to walk in holiness. A consecrated life. Jesus overcame sin. Jesus overcame temptation. The moment we overcome temptation, the fire of God's presence come upon us. Hallelujah. The fire of God comes upon you. Hallelujah. I want you to stand up to your feet in these closing moments. Number five. In these closing moments. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13. When David was anointed to be king, the Bible says the Spirit of God came from that day forward. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you're going to go forward. Hallelujah. You're not going to go backward, but you're going to go forward. Tell the person next to you, I'm going forward. Hallelujah. You're going to go forward. When you hear the voice of God, it's always going to take you forward. The children of Israel, when they came out of Egypt, it took them forward because they're following the cloud. They're following the Spirit of God. It's taking them forward into the promised land. And there will be obstacles, the Red Sea. But it's the authority 
of the spirit of God and the word of God that's going to open up the Red Seas in your life. The rod is the word of God. Amen. You got to use the rod. Hallelujah. And that's when you go forward. Amen. Into the promises. Into the things that God has for your life. God is releasing that authority over your life. Amen. As you stand on the brink of your Red Sea, it's going to part. Because you got a rod. Amen. It's just not just a rod, but it's the word of God. And that word begins to have authority over your life is when you're obedient to it. When you're obedient, when you're not only a hearer of the word, but you become a doer of the word of God. The Bible says that when we do what God tells us, that we will be blessed in everything that we do. God will begin to bless you. Amen. You will go forward. There's a forward momentum. I'm going forward. I'm not going back into my sin. I'm not going back into the mess. I'm not going to live a defeated life anymore. But victory belongs to me. Hallelujah. I'm going to taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Tasting means obedience. Tasting means consecration. Tasting means walking in love. Walking in forgiveness. Walking in the spirit. In the fire of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That's tasting. And when you taste that, you can't go back. Hallelujah. You're only going forward. Hallelujah. I want you to close your eyes in these closing moments of this service. Musicians, just come and play something softly. Perhaps you're here this morning and you're saying, Pastor, I don't understand because I had such a disappointment in my life. Pastor, I prayed and I done everything, but it never came through. And you're here, you got questions. And this morning, the Holy Spirit is here. And he's all over you this morning. He's stirring your heart. In Romans 15 verse 13, it says that God wants to give you, grant you his peace. And tonight, this morning, as the enemy tries to bring confusion over your minds, God is bringing clarity to your mind. As the enemy wants to bring sadness to you, the, enemy, the Lord is releasing holy joy to you. But there's a condition that you've got to believe. And tonight, as a, as a messenger of the gospel, I've done my part. I brought you to a place of believing, of trusting Him. No matter what happens, I'm just going to trust you, Lord. And as you begin to trust Him, the Holy Spirit is going to abound in your life. The Spirit of God is going to abound in you. And as the Spirit of God abounds in you, there's going to be holy hope that's going to rise within you. Every form of hopelessness has been cancelled this morning. Rejection is cancelled. Sadness is cancelled right now. Bad reports are cancelled right now. Sickness and disease is cancelled. Because holy hope is rising within me. The gospel without hope is a weak gospel. But as Jesus rose from the dead, it gives me hope. That is the hope I have. Because he's risen from the dead. Hallelujah. It causes me to be hopeful this morning. A faith without hope is a weak faith. A faith that will not work for you. 
I'm here to tell you it's not going to work. Because faith works with hope. The Bible says faith is a substance of the things hoped for and the evidence of the things unseen. The enemy has robbed your hope. The enemy has tried to steal your hope. It's like a little rat that's come in the inside of your house, inside of your marriage. It's trying to steal that hope. And this morning, I'm here to kill that rat in your life. That hopelessness is going away right now. In Jesus' name. No more sorrow, no more pain. Joy is my portion. Hopefulness is my portion right now. In the name of Jesus, for the glory of God, just begin to rejoice and praise Him right now. I'm going to be hopeful in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The enemy is under my feet. Hallelujah. Sickness is under my feet right now. I believe in divine healing in Jesus' name. I believe in deliverance in Jesus' name. I believe in the provision of God in Jesus' name. I believe in promotion in Jesus' name. Hope is my portion right now. Hallelujah. I give you praise right now, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Begin to stir yourself up, uh, beloved, this morning. Stir yourself up this morning. Oh, we praise you this morning, Lord. We give you glory and honor today. In the name of Jesus. Oh, begin to praise Him. Begin to praise Him right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Over to Pastor Ralph.